Our next caller is Cody from Indiana. Cody, what's happening? Hey, not much, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, I'm recovering uh, from ACL surgery. I had it six months ago today, and I'm in week seven of a five by five program I've been running. Uh, but I want to know if it's safe to start a cut while I'm trying to rehab my knee. Oh, I see. That's a good question. So you want to know if, if cutting your calories while your knee is healing is going to call, uh, slow down recovery of the knee. I'd be yes. more, I'd be more worried about the five okay. by five. Yeah, I um, maybe I don't think so, but maybe I, typically if I have a client's recovering from a surgery, I keep them at least at maintenance. I don't put them necessarily at a surplus, but I do keep them at a maintenance because theoretically the cut in calories could slow down recovery. Now, if you eat too many calories, that could also slow down recovery because of the increased inflammation. Uh, is there is there a problem with waiting till the knee gets healed, or what, why start the cut now? Um, the reason I'm wanting to start the cut now is, uh, for one, I'm I'm typically performance wise, I do my best around between 190 and 200 pounds. I'm currently sitting at 215, uh, and with my job, I have to be able to kind of go to a dead sprint at a moment's notice. So. The extra weight um, kind of has me worrying about that a little bit. Uh, hmm. It's kind of a, I feel like I, if I keep gaining weight, the recovery will be harder to get back to be able to sprint when I need to, um, as opposed to if I lost a little bit, uh, I feel like I feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Are you doing any cardio right now? I am doing a little bit. Uh, mostly through my therapy. They want me to kind of keep it on my therapy days. I go twice a week. Um, I do a treadmill uh, for about 10 minutes, Stairmaster for five, and then I do a uh, bike for five. Um, but on my non-therapy days is when I'm doing my lifting. Are you tracking your steps and everything else with some kind of like... Uh, yes, I average about 10,000 steps a day. Yeah. Okay. Th there's Look, you can't sprint from a dead stop right now anyway because your ACL is heal healing. Now, I would definitely not want you to gain weight, but I don't know if an aggressive cut would be a good idea until the ACL is healed. So I would either try to maintain or watch your weight slowly go down, but I wouldn't aim. It's probably not a good idea to try to lose 15 pounds while you're also healing from surgery. I mean, is yeah. the, are they telling you they, they don't want you to, like if I asked you to do incline walking so i put you on a uh, 10 incline and power walk 3.5 speed you know three times a week for a half hour to 45 minutes are you is your your pt telling you they don't want you doing that they uh don't want me doing that quite yet uh just because the rehab i mean i'm only six months out uh typically before uh when i was 10 years ago i was about you know right at this point i was about 100 percent. right now i'm probably closer to 85 maybe 90 um but no there's no reason why i couldn't do that and i absolutely would do that um i just don't want to my, my main concern is i just don't want to keep carrying this extra weight if yeah the, i mean the reason why i was okay. asking is because i and, and and the reason why you're getting a lot of questions from all of us because there's not so much a wrong or a right answer here and this mm -hmm. is one of those ones that i think all of us as coaches would want to kind of play day by day on how you're feeling and the feedback that i'm getting from you mm -hmm. but I, why i would rather you do i would rather you create a caloric deficit through walking on the treadmill mm -hmm. or doing a nice incline walk somewhere just getting the steps up justin asked about that earlier too probably the same reason is mm -hmm. i'd rather you stay fed and give the body the, the 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 nutrients it needs and if i create any sort of a caloric deficit i'd rather do it through movement in your case especially if the movement is going to promote recovery uh, with your uh, acl and also potentially performance yeah, and overall in the activity overall general activity i would like to you know focus on increasing versus like you know bringing that intensity into like your five by five training for instance uh i would yeah. much prefer you to you know like get more restorative type of movement in uh blood flow would be more of my focus yeah and i, I want to address that too because that was my first 
uh, comment about the my my one concern would be running a five by five right now. If you are at a place still with the ACL where PT doesn't want you even doing any extra cardiovascular activity, then I'd be concerned with heavy lifting, which basically is five by five. I would be doing more, you know, stability and high rep training. Yeah. So Even you get more like hypertrophy. Yeah. yeah. So hypertrophy and stability and just high rep uh, type of movements because at one, there's uh, less risk Two, in this case, it would be beneficial for the caloric deficit also. Um, that's kind of where I would push you right now. Yeah. Now here's I'm going to give you something specific. Okay. I want you to do traditional resistance training for the knee. That's okay for the leg. That's okay. Studies show now in the past if you broke an arm or you hurt a shoulder, we would say don't work out the other arm because it'll get too far ahead of the other one. But now we know that with studies that if you train the leg that is okay, you actually reduce the muscle loss on the side that's injured. So go ahead and strength train with your good side. And then I want you to do BFR on the leg that mm -hmm. is uh, injured. So I don't know if you're familiar with blood flow restricted training. Yep, absolutely. But I do that on the, the side that is healing because you can use, you know, 10, 15% of the weight that you normally would, which you're probably working with now, mm -hmm. and actually induce a similar, not the same, but similar effect to traditional resistance training. So you might actually be able to build a little bit of strength and muscle on the side uh, that is healing. And then the last thing I'd say is when you're done with your PT, when you get cleared, use a program like MAPS Prime Pro to work mm -hmm. on hip, ankle, and foot mobility so you prevent this from happening again in the future. If you don't have the BFR guide and MAPS Prime Pro, we'll send that right over to you. Yeah, I don't have MAPS Prime Pro, um, and I actually, I don't have the BFR guide either. Okay. Um, that was going to be my next question, and thank you guys for already answering that, of where should I go from the five by five? Yeah, no, the, um, we'll, we'll send those over to you. Do those, yeah. the, especially the blood, the occlusion training. It's remarkable what it can do uh, at, at, at the very least at preventing muscle loss. That's where it came out of, uh, it, yeah, of therapy. That's training. the most valuable yeah. place that mm -hmm. you could use it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks, Cody. All right. Thank you. You know, I've only used occlusion training for like aesthetic purposes to add a little extra size to areas that don't respond. But I, I, and I've never trained a client. I don't think I have with occlusion training who's had an injury. Mm -hmm. But I swear to God, if I had one now, I think it would be oh, so, it's so fun. So effective. Yes, yeah. it would be so fun to implement that to just to see what it does. You know. Yeah, especially when you're limited uh, with range of motion, it's it's a great way to still add that kind of hypertrophy training and build strength. I, I found it interesting the PT doesn't want him doing any of the, any other cardio activity, but then would be okay with like a five by five type of training. That's sounds weird. Did to me. Did they approve that or did he just, do I don't know. I probably I think it's probably just upper body. Mm. He's oh, probably not training lower body. Oh, do you think that's what it is? Six yeah. months later, even. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it. He says he's 85% or whatever. I mean, it sounds like it. I can't imagine a PT clearing five by five compound lifts when they're still rehabbing him. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I don't. And six months is actually. I mean, he should be doing pretty good by now. Um, but I, 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 to me, I instead of cutting calories, I definitely would create a deficit through more movement mm -hmm. and more. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, and I would do things like BFR stability type training. I mean, probably the stuff that he's doing in rehab, mm -hmm. I would be doing that more. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout the the day and stuff like that to get better at it. Um, and then when the time comes for him to get back into more traditional strength training, um. I would either run one of the uh, ma main programs we have in reverse order or do like a performance, maybe MAPS yeah. performance type of training. Well, even then too, like more unilateral work because like stability is going to be the biggest yeah, yeah. issue. So uh, yeah, five by five, you know, it's to me, it just doesn't make any sense for this. No, no, not for this person.